I have raven eggs since I've been working on for over two years and still aren't done. Well, you, you did the emergency rule pretty quick, didn't you? Yeah, well, we, during the entire pandemic, we've had to do a lot of extraordinary things, and we've done emergency regulations, and we've done executive orders, you're right. Those are extraordinary things, and they've had to be done really rapidly. Well, doctor, masks were in school all last year, from September of 2020 to June of 2021, correct? Yes. And no time during those eight to 10 months did the, did the, the Department of Health be a normal regulatory hearing on the issue of masking in schools, correct? Yes. It's a lot more than 120 days between September and June, right? Yes. Why didn't we convene it between September and June last year? There was a lot of things going on in the pandemic. It wasn't an active question. I don't know. I, you have to ask the governor at the time. I don't remember why. Wait. Doctor, you're the head of the COVID response. No, I'm the medical director. But What's your position with regard to COVID? I thought you were the, 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 the head of the COVID response team. No, I'm the medical director for the COVID leadership team. The executive director of the COVID leadership team is Tom McCarthy. And the director of health is the one who's in charge of everything in the department, including COVID. So it's your testimony that it's Dr. Alexander Scott's decision whether or not to convene a normal regulatory hearing over the last year regarding masking? It was never discussed. I don't remember it ever being discussed that we should do this as a regulation. Well, you're familiar with the emergency rule statute, correct? Yes. It says you have to find imminent peril, correct? Yes. Well, there was nothing imminent in July of 2021 that wasn't imminent in September of 2020, was there? I disagree. I think July presented a new situation entirely. Well, the, the reality is the same. It was going to be masking, mandatory masking in schools. That's the issue. That's the regulation. You had from September of 2020 until now to convene a regulatory hearing, and you didn't. You're right, we didn't. In fact, have you convened one now? No, we did not. So since the emergency rule was enacted back on September 23rd, you still haven't started the 120 day process? No, we have not. You realize the emergency rule is only good for 120 days? It's good for a very amount of time, and I, I don't know how long this one is good for. The statute says the emergency rule may be effective for not longer than 120 days, renewable once for a period not exceeding 60 days. Yes, I don't know how long this particular regulation is good for. You don't know? I was told it was 45 days, but I'm not really involved in the process. This is where legal people tell people things. I provide medical guidance for regulations. I don't remember the duration of how long it was good for. I've never verified that. The, regulation, the, the statute also requires that the agency Publish the emergency rule on its own website with reasons for the finding that the agency, without prior notice of hearing or on an abbreviated notice of hearing that it finds practicable, may promulgate the rule. You're familiar with that language in the statute? I wasn't until you just read it. Okay. So, it appears in the statute that the Department of Health could have still convened a hearing on the emergency rule and done it under an abbreviated notice of hearing period. You weren't aware of that? My job is to provide medical guidance. I'm the medical director. There's other people who deal with the legal process of promulgating regulations. I'm not involved with that part. So nobody ever asked you, Dr. We're thinking about passing this emergency rule. What's your opinion about it? I'm asked to give medical guidance, and I do. That's what I do. But I'm not asked about when it's be published, what is language around, you know, disclaimers or dates or things like that. That's where the regulation people and the lawyers weigh in, and they do that work. I'm not involved with that part. So you're saying the state lawyers decided to do this emergency rule, not the Department of Health? No, I didn't say that at all. What I said was, I provided medical guidance. 
I gave it my advice, and the regulatory people processed the regulation, put it to the legislature together, and then work with how it's going to get posted and how it's going to get edited and who's going to get signed by. I provide medical guidance. I'm the medical director. I'm not one of the state's attorneys or one of the state's regulatory staff. Now you mentioned that if you pass a normal procedure regulation, you have to consider cost-benefit analysis, correct? Yes, we do that. We've spent, I don't know, how many days here? Six, seven days debating the science of math. You cited MMWR reports. Dr. Boston has cited reports that prove masks don't work and maybe it's actually harmful. We have some disagreement potentially on that issue. Is it the whole purpose of a regulatory procedure is to have all of that information, science, opinions, data presented in a regulatory hearing so that the regulatory agency will balance cost benefit? of whether masks work, whether it's harmful. Is that the whole point of the no regulatory procedure? Objection form. And Dr. McDonald has also testified that he's not involved in that process. He just provides medical guidance and then the rest is handled by the regulator and the state's attorneys. And then request a legal conclusion because you've asked him what the intent of the Administrative Procedures Act is. It seems to be well known. Is it true, Doctor, you've never conducted a cost-benefit analysis to determine the appropriateness of mandatory masking in schools? I've never done one. Okay. And is, is it true, Doctor, that you've never invited comment or considered alternate opinions with regard to masking in schools other than the one that you have, which is a they should, the masking should be in place of schools. Objection form. The doctor has also said he takes on multiple opinions at various times to help formulate his guidance. I understand. You don't have to give him the answer. Sorry. He can handle it himself. The question was fair. Yeah, I, I am open to other opinions. In fact, myself and the entire medical staff have looked at every article we could find to talk about this issue and to see if there was an issue with masking. There was an article that came out June 30th in JAMA by a, a Dr. Wallach from a university in Poland about Germany. And you know, it said masks were harmful for kids. We looked at it closely. We had discussions about it. It was retracted 14 days later because the author couldn't describe the methodology. So we do look for other opinions. I mean, even yesterday I was looking for articles that would be contrary to my opinion because I want to keep an open mind about this. I just didn't find them. I found an article from China that came out this year that actually said, Masks reduce anxiety, as you know, people who wore masks, kids who wore masks had less anxiety, though they exercised more, caused less anxiety. So we're constantly looking for different opinions. We're not closed-minded, nor am I working in a vacuum by myself. Doctor, Dr. Andrew Boston testified that there were 13 studies, randomized controlled trial studies, prior to the pandemic, 10 years prior to the pandemic, that proved Masking doesn't work to stop the spread of the virus. Did you consider any of those studies in your analysis? I wasn't familiar with those studies beforehand. No, I'm not aware of them. Have you gone back and looked at it to see if they're relevant to your opinion now? I looked at some of the studies you proposed, and I can't remember all that I've looked at, but I have looked at some. By the way, isn't it also true in a normal regulatory process that if the regulatory agency decides to rely on certain evidence and discard other evidence, they have to explain that in writing why they do that, right? Objection, Your Honor. Dr. Curry testified about the regulatory process. Good to know. Thank you. You know, you can answer. When we do the regular regulatory process, we respond to every comment. I'm not the one who responds to every comment, someone else does, but I know they respond to every comment.
And again, I think you testified earlier that when I asked you whether you considered other states or even other countries experiences with masking. For example, how throughout the southern states right now, hospitalizations have plummeted, in some cases by 85%, and they have no masking. And you, your testimony was, well, I didn't look at Rhode Island. Do you remember that? I didn't say I only look at Rhode Island. You're mischaracterizing what I said. I said I am aware of what was on other states, but I follow Rhode Island most closely. And that's what I do. I work at the Department of Health. I have data about what goes on in our schools. I know specific facts about what goes on in our schools. Because I work at the Department of Health, I know 65% of the people in K through 12 who, uh, who are, have a positive test have you know, symptoms or are infectious. I know our own data. Doctor, you're so your answer is you do not look at data or information coming from other states or other countries. You only look at Rhode Island data. No, I didn't say that. I do look at it, but I look at Rhode Island data most closely because that's the data I live with. But if I see studies from other countries, of course I look at studies from other countries. I don't see every study out there. If I see studies from other states, I look at that too. I'm open to both points of view. What we've done is made a recommendation. I made a recommendation based on, to me, what were persuasive arguments. I think the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Science brief done May 7th was compelling and persuasive. It was a really thoughtful review article that looked at 65 different articles. I thought it was very persuasive. CDC science brief on May 7th was very persuasive. On May 7th, the CDC was still saying that if you were fully vaccinated, you didn't have to wear a mask, you didn't have to worry about being around anyone who didn't wear a mask because you couldn't catch COVID. And then something happened in Provincetown where there was a breakthrough, and the CDC had to admit they were wrong and change what their recommendation was, correct? We know you're incorrectly summarizing what happened. The Delta variant became the dominant strain of Rhode Island after July 4th. The Delta variant wasn't present before May. What the CDC studied in Barnstable County, Provincetown, is you have a county that had almost no cases in Provincetown. Then they had this massive outbreak of unvaccinated, unvaccinated individuals. And what they did was they had new information. When people have new information, they update their guidance. That's what I saw, was they had new information, so they updated their guidance. So they were wrong in May, and they were proven wrong in what happened in Provincetown, that vaccines worked to prevent you from catching COVID. No. They weren't wrong in May. They were right based on the facts they had at the time. Like I said several times now, Delta variant wasn't in Rhode Island, wasn't in Massachusetts, really wasn't in the United States before May. It really became an issue after July 4th. So the pandemic changed. The pandemic became very severe. That's why it was, to me, important to have a new state of emergency and to have a new, um, a new approach here because the pandemic was getting worse. And I'm representing the representative of Department of Health. My job is to protect the public. That's what I'm trying to do, is protect the public. Um, in my complaint, which you, you testified to review my complaint. Right? I did. In my complaint, I cite a statement from the CDC website as of September 11th of this year, discussing the variants of COVID, SARS-CoV-2. Do you recall that? If you would just, I don't remember your complaint in detail, so you may have to repeat the phrase you're, you're going to talk about. Yeah. This is where uh, the CDC mentions that there were three categories uh, of variant classification, three classes. Variant of interest, variant of concern, variant of high concern. Yes. You're familiar with that? I am very familiar with that. And then they talk about the fact that there were four strains that were currently classified as variants of concern in the United States. Yes. Okay. Do you know what those four are? Yes. Which one are they? There's the alpha, the beta, the gamma, and the delta. Okay. And to date, as of September 11th, no variants of high consequence have been identified. Correct? Yes, thankfully. Right. So delta is no more of high consequence than alpha, beta, or gamma, according to the CDC's own website. Yeah, you're interpreting it wrong because it's the volume of cases that made it a public health emergency in Rhode Island. Keep in mind, prior to July 4th, Rhode Island had survived the alpha variant as well as the beta and the gamma. We were doing well. 
What happened, which was new, was the Delta variant invaded Rhode Island and became the dominant strain. But that's true all over the country, right? The Delta is, is, is the dominant strain all over the country right now. It is, yes, that's right. And that's why the CDC says, you know, the vaccines don't really work so well with regard to Delta, so you still have to wear a mask, even if you're vaccinated, right? The vaccines don't have the same effectiveness against Delta as they had against other strains. Right. So, in fact, I think you and your counsel conceded that the purpose of the vaccine isn't to prevent you from getting the virus, it isn't to prevent you from giving the virus, it's only intended to lessen the severity if you do get it, right? You would agree with that? Well, I think you're mischaracterizing it. In other words, the vaccine's very effective at preventing people from dying. It's also very effective at preventing people from being hospitalized, but it's not as effective as preventing cases. But obviously, it prevents people from getting COVID, and that's where I think you're mischaracterizing it. It prevents people from getting COVID? Yes, it does. Then why, if you're vaccinated, why are you still wearing a mask? Because it doesn't prevent everybody from getting COVID. And we have, you just don't know which ones it works for and which ones it doesn't. I don't know which people it is very effective for and which people it's not. That's not known. Oh, well, by the way, Doctor, does natural immunity protect you from getting COVID or giving COVID to someone else? For some people it does. So just like the vaccine. So natural immunity is still being studied. I don't know how long natural immunity lasts. And I don't know how often people with natural immunity transmit disease from one person to the other. Well, that's true of the vaccine, too. We don't know how long the vaccine lasts. They're talking about third booster shots, right? Booster shots have already been approved for the Pfizer vaccine. vaccine. I'm sorry. We're going on to the future with the vaccines. We have enough problems with masks. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, the vaccine is one of the one of the factors that you take into account in whether or not you're going to drop this mask mandate, right? It, it, it is a factor, but we'd love to be able to offer it to children sooner than later. Do you test? Does the state of Rhode Island test for natural immunity? The state does not do tests for natural immunity. So you're mandating people to get vaccines, or you're strongly encouraging them to get vaccines. But you're not testing to see whether they've already had natural immunity. That's correct. Wouldn't that be something important to do to determine whether or not how many people in the state already have natural immunity? No, it's not important to do. Well, isn't it on your isn't it on your 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 It's on our dashboard. I mean it's under protected community immunity. Yeah, so we don't know how long natural immunity lasts. So the working definition of the model it uses is that it lasts for 90 days. Because that's the assumption the Center for Disease Control Prevention uses. I want to show you NO, please. So you're saying because the Centers for Disease Control uses natural immunity, that's why it's in the model. They have come up with a definition that they're pretty confident natural immunity is definitely working for 90 days. So that's the assumption they made, that's the assumption they used. If you go to, again, I apologize for having to retread this. If you go to Exhibit N, the first page, Estimated Prevalence of Infection, it says CDC Community Transmission, correct? On the, on the, on the right in blue? I see it, yes. If you go to Exhibit O, July 28th. What three letters are missing before community transmission in that model? CDC. So you stopped following the CDC guidelines on July 28th, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Missouri testified it's not the person who does the information, it's the person who reviews the information. So somebody else in the department would make a determination with respect to that. And he would be stopped from using CDC information, so the question was. Actually, if you look at the, I'm sorry, Joe, can I just apply on this? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just want to answer that if you don't mind. Yeah. It says community transmission, then there's a little symbol. Right. It says community transmission level brought it here because it's by your body. Doc, you have to read that a little bit slower for this. I'm time. sorry. But go ahead, read, read what it says after this. It says the community transmission level provided here is inspired by the CDC's level community transmission metric. The CDC uses both case rates 
then nucleic acid amplification test percent positive determine the level of community transmission. Here, the community transmission level is based only on case rate and does not factor in percent positive. Correct. That, that little asterisk, you go back to exhibit N, on June 30th, there is no asterisk with that disclaimer, is there? Yes, you're right, there is no asterisk. Right. So, sometime between June 30th and July 28th, the Rhode Island Department of Health decided to stop following the CDC guidance, stop considering test positivity or the NAA, NAAT positivity. And it said, it says, it's inspired by the CDC's level. And only case rates and not percent positive is being used. The state of Rhode Island changed their metrics between June, 20th, uh, June 30th and July 28th and stopped following the CDC. Isn't that correct? No, you're wrong. I'm reading what it says here. Tell, tell me why I'm wrong. I think it's obvious why you're wrong. It's obvious? Tell me. Look, we go by case rates. In other words, it says right above there, in blue, less than 10, low transmission, greater than 10, moderate, greater than 50, substantial, greater than or equal to 100, high transmission. These are the Center for Disease Control and Prevention thresholds for the definition of low, moderate, substantial, and high transmission. Where are you reading from? I beg your pardon? Where are you reading from? Right above where it says community transmission. Oh, the, 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 the colored version. Yes, it, it's right there. there. There's no subterfuge. There's no one trying to hide anything. They're just trying to explain it. I don't know who updates the language. That's all it says, though. But, Doctor, the language is different on July 28th than it is on June 30th. June 30th doesn't say it does not consider the test positivity rate. It doesn't say that on June 30th. You're right, it doesn't. Right. So on June 30th, it was considering the test positivity rate, and then on July 28th, it stopped. No, you're wrong. Well, that's what the document says, Doctor. We, we weren't considering test positivity rate. I can assure you, I work for the Department of Health. I look at this data. I can tell you, no one talks about the case positivity rate. <coughs> then why, why did the CDC letters disappear? Why the sudden asterisk on June, July 28th? If it was the same as it was on June 30th, why did we do that? I, I don't know why. People update things. In other words, people who work for us edit things. I don't think anyone meant anything by it other than just to provide clarity. I think they provided clarity, that's all. By the way, Doctor, you testified that the number of cases, the community transmission based on the number of cases is the most important measure. And you testified that Rhode Island does a lot more testing now than it did before, right? I said Rhode Island does more testing per capita than most other states, if not every other state. But the testing in and of itself doesn't prove whether someone's symptomatic or is in the hospital or even is going to die, right? Right. So the fact that you're doing more testing, of course you're going to come up with more cases, but they're going to be, all those cases could be people who are perfectly fine. Right? We do case finding. This is a core public health function. Because you need to isolate those who have a positive test and quarantine those exposed, it's imperative that we do the core public health function of case finding. So what we're doing is what we're supposed to be doing, which is testing as many people as possible so we can isolate those who have positive tests so they don't spread it to others and quarantine those who are exposed so they don't spread it to others because it's asymptomatic. So yes, we're definitely doing that. But this model doesn't just count positive tests, does it? It counts negative tests too. It... Doctor, let's go back to June 30th. Read what's next to the asterisk under estimated prevalence of infection. It says estimated prevalence considers community transition of COVID-19 of asymptomatic, unreported, and those not protected by regular testing for COVID. Right? Yes, it's right there. So this model assumes people have positive tests without any evidence that they do. Do you have a question? Is that right? Yes, there's assumptions made in every model, and there's assumptions made in this model. So it's not just about reading the data of people who have actually tested positive. It's making assumptions that people are positive, even without that evidence, correct? I've testified multiple times this model is built on assumptions.
this model public anywhere? Can somebody with Dr. Boston go on the website and review the model and see what, what it's based on? I don't know. Medical director of the scheme. But what is your position with the Department of Health? 
I have many titles. I am one of the medical directors for the Department of Health. There's other medical directors for Department of Health. I'm also the medical director of the COVID unit, but I have other roles as well. I'm medical director for the drug overdose prevention team. I'm medical director for the regulatory side of the house. I'm medical director for health policy and medical communication. I have a lot of people who work with me so I can handle all these diverse tasks. So there's a lot of people who help me be me. Is there a chief medical director of the department? There is the director of health, which is Dr. Alexander Scott, and then there's the medical directors. There is a delegated authority document that the director signed that lists an order of priority. She's incapable of carrying out her duties. Who is the next medical director in line? This is my name, followed by Dr. Bandy, followed by Dr. Klein. You indicated at one point that you relied on actually two different parts of the uh, dashboard. Uh, one was the amount of hospitalizations and another, the other one was the amount of uh, affecting the students. Do you rely on, on the information, all the information on the dashboard? I look at all the information on the entire dashboard, but I don't rely on all of it the same. It's a 22 page dashboard. Some of the pages are really more relevant for the Department of Business Regulation, but I care about those things as well, so I don't look at them every day. But at the same time that you're looking at it, the DBR is also looking at it and trying to implement their procedures? This dashboard's been around since the beginning of the pandemic. When we had the lockdown of our economy, things like how many people are on food stamps, our unemployment rate were much more important then than they are now. How far people were moving, Things like that were much more important than they are now. So DBR was looking at things like that. I don't know if DBR is still looking at data. We don't interact with them daily anymore. Okay. So you indicated earlier today that the model for hospital impact has changed, but you're not sure how. Is that correct? I think we need more clarity. In other words, well, you remember Mr. Pitch really talking to you about uh, hospital beds and PPE, how right. some of the factors have, are different now. Well, the variables are the same. In other words, those seven variables haven't changed throughout the entire pandemic. They're the same seven variables that are measured. Okay, but now there's another column added, correct? Yeah, apparently another column was added about staffing. Okay, and we can assume that that's not in, that doesn't factor into the need docs score because that's not from the fact. I can think you're right in that assumption. I think, you know, part of what you see, though, if you look at some of the variables, it has to do with a lot of things about where a patient is in the emergency department. And one of the things is wait time for the longest patient, or waiting time for the longest waiting room patient. These are affected by staff. Number of people in a, in a ED and a ventilator is also well, based on staff. I'm trying to find out whether or not you're actually calculating the official NEDOC score or whether or not the Department of Health is now using something else on that dashboard. No, we don't calculate this number. The NEDOC score is provided to us. We don't calculate the number. It's a national metric. It's given to us. Is it in a metric of the first six columns put together? No. No, it's it's a matter of these seven metrics. It's a, it's a formula that's used as a national metric. It's not a Rhode Island Department of Health metric that we created. It's a national metric that everyone uses across the country. We just use it early in the pandemic so we could follow our hospital capacity, and we still use it. You're not sure why the extra column was that? No, I don't know. Mr. Pitch really talked about the uh, business meeting of uh, Karen O'Ingram. Did you know that the hospitals were trying to get patients back into the hospital? I have no idea what that meeting's about. And I, 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 all I can say is, no, just, I'm asking about I don't know anything about it. I'm just asking whether or not the doctors have expressed to you a desire to, I'm sorry, the hospitals have expressed to you a desire to bring in uh, their own patients, be they private pay, outpatient, um, whatever it is they want. The message I continually hear from the emergency physicians I talk to 
is they're continually overwhelmed, and they're still overwhelmed. That's the message I've heard yesterday, message I've heard today. In other words, I don't hear any from, from emergency rooms or hospitals that they're anything but overwhelmed. So surely you know there's a lot more of a hospital than the emergency room. This is me talking to chief medical officers, chief executive officers, and I'm very aware that there's a lot more of a hospital. When you talk to those people, people, do they express to you a desire to bring in other patients? I haven't heard that from anyone yet. Such as a routine or, option, or elective surgery. I haven't heard that. I'm sure they want to do that because they want to get beyond the pandemic at some point. But what I hear consistently is the hospitals are overwhelmed. So in July and August of 2021, there's no more future hospitalization projections in the dashboard. Uh, correct? Yes, I, I don't know why that's the case. No, because I, I saw the projections from in other presentations I was at. So I was seeing this modeling data, you know, at least twice a week. So I don't know why it wasn't on the dashboard, but I was seeing it twice a week. So I, I know it was being done. I don't know why it's on the dashboard, so I'm not the first to populate the dashboard. But before it was uh, top, front, and center, correct? Yes, it's there. And it's, it's an important factor not only for you, but for Mr. McCarthy. Everyone else is on the code. So, so we see the data every week. I, just took, I see the data at least twice a week. I don't know why it was on the dashboard. I thought that you referred to the dashboard. You did use the word by. Uh, the guy that you have every week, you express great importance to him on this first thing you did. I did it twice a week. It's a nice way to summarize what's going on in the pandemic. Most of the data I see is actually coming from other sources, but it's nice to have everything in the dashboard twice a week. I get to look at the whole thing. Well, is the projected hospitalizations, isn't that a significant factor for you to consider? Yes, this projected hospitalizations is something I look at. And consider? Yes. reference several studies to justify your opinion uh, that masks are not clearly associated with children's physical ailments. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All of these seem to have been recent, during the pandemic, as you put it, uh, and not long term, uh, even though there were studies for children, correct? Right. And that's because it's difficult to measure this long-term because we have to wear it. Right, I'm amazed we actually have as many studies as we have. But of all those studies, you, you went through a number of different studies as to Dr. Boston concerning the, the physical effects. Have you looked at any studies for the emotional effects and uh, mental health effects of the children? Yes. And what are those? Well, I, I haven't found many. I found one yesterday in particular that I was looking at, just like, I did another literature search to make sure I'm not missing something. And I found a study from China, published in JAMA Pediatrics in January of 2021. It went on to explain that anxiety and depression was much less common in children who wore masks and had more than half an hour of exercise per day. But in all respect, that was a study that you looked at yesterday, the past couple of the days, right. so it was not the basis for any of the decisions or regulations. That That's right. Did you look at the emotional needs or mental health needs of children or consider that when advising on a mass pandemic? We considered it, but we just haven't seen studies that said there was a problem. So it definitely was considered. The pandemic's a pretty emotional stress on kids, period. One of the things I see in my private practice, a lot of kids were stressed out about the pandemic. They were stressed about not being in school. They were stressed out about just all the uncertainty that's in our culture. I really didn't have a lot of patients complaining about wearing masks, though. I just didn't see that. You didn't have, oh, sorry, you didn't have I didn't have a lot of patients complaining about wearing masks. I just didn't have much patients complaining about that. They seemed to wear the masks okay, they didn't combine them. This is what I saw in my own experience. But I didn't see studies that showed about children having adverse effects from wearing masks or even being emotionally traumatized after wearing masks. Well, wearing masks for a year and a half for a child and 
uh, third grade or junior high school, that would have a bigger impact than it would for someone like me. You know, as a pediatrician, I've noticed that children adapt to things. They're very resilient. Kids generally get used to things. And I think the kids don't nearly get as upset about this as how adults do. And quite frankly, most children respond to changes in the world. The kids I've seen during the pandemic demonstrate a lot of resilience. Most of them are exceedingly happy to be back at school, which is something I never thought I'd hear kids say, but they love being back at school. But that's your own patience, your own limited practice as opposed to right? I haven't seen studies, though. We're looking for that. Like, the entire medical staff is open-minded. We're trying to find studies, but we just aren't finding them. Well, so you do agree that mass are a substantial change from past practice for uh, many people in America. Oh, of course it is, yeah. It's not part of our culture. Part of other cultures, but not part of ours. Do you also agree that wearing masks are tiring, uh, unsettling, perhaps is the best word, for many people who haven't worn them recently? You know I, I don't know if that's true, Your Honor. I mean, quite frankly, people get used to it. Like, I wear a mask, and quite frankly, I don't really get all that bummed out about it. A lot of people just wear the mask throughout the day. I mean, I have to admit, I think people generally will be happy when we get rid of these things. But you know, I mean, I can't say that generally people feel tired about it or upset about it. Well, what about children? So I don't know, because kids haven't been complaining about this, and I'm not sure what you are. You are an expert in pediatrics. I am. But that includes not only the physical health, but also mental health. Yeah, so I haven't seen kids, studies showing children are adversely affected by mask wearing. I haven't seen it. The study I quoted yesterday that I read talked about actually a benefit effect from this. And I think it gets that larger issue with, I think children want to be in school and they don't want to spread COVID to each other. And it's interesting to me that one of the things I've seen is, even the states that ban mask mandates, like Florida, kids are still wearing masks. I don't know that that data is there, quite frankly. And I, it hasn't been studied well enough for me to draw a conclusion. So I don't know that wearing a mask has a positive or negative effect on the child's you know, emotional growth. I think the most important thing is the back in school. We keep going back to that back to school as a positive thing. As a person who really didn't enjoy school while I was in it, um, why do you say that that's a positive for the child? Well, they did introduce several exhibits that talked about that, why it really wasn't in children's best interest to be out of school. It affected their psychological health, their emotional health, their physical health, and their educational health. Keep in mind, Robert, schools often provide a lot more to kids than their education. For many children, it's where they get one or two meals a day. For a lot of children, it's the safest place for them to be during the day. And for other kids, it's where their friends are. And it's where they interact with the positive role models in their life. There's just a lot of evidence that being in school is really the child's best interest. So this, this has been well studied, and I think it makes sense to all of us too, is that kids being out of school for that prolonged period of time, that was highly unusual for kids, very disruptive to kids, and it also disrupted their families. Not everybody could find someone to watch their kids, so people often couldn't work. It was very disruptive to our culture. Thank you. I'm almost finished. Marsowski, do you want to keep going? I'm sorry, read the right. I do not have any questions. No questions. Uh, Mr. Pitcher, because I asked some questions, did you want to ask any of the others? Just, just, just one. You don't have to. Uh, I don't. I can't help myself. No, I have to. You mentioned a China study that we just read over the weekend. Are you aware of a study in Hong, that was done in Hong Kong back in 2006? Objection, Your Honor. The question should be limited to the questions that you asked. It should be a limited cross examination. Yes, if I were to redirect, yes, it's stated in the scope. Maybe it is. Hong Kong is a part of China. I'm not quite sure what. Uh, Hong Kong is a separate country. Could be. It's a separate country. It happened in um, 1999. Mr. Fisher, 
again, the questions that the judge was asking you was about whether it's a social or emotional harm to children wearing masks. And you cited one study that you just read over the weekend in China, correct? I read it yesterday. Yes, I'm sorry. Well, like, were you aware that this study was done in Hong Kong in 2006, published in 2006, and actually found there was harm, social and emotional harm to children from wearing masks? Were you aware of that? Objection, Your Honor. Dr. Arnold said he wasn't aware of the study. We're going to ask questions with respect to the doctor should be given an opportunity to review it. The participation of the doctor in the conference is absolutely. Are you aware? Overruled. I'm not aware of the study and it's before the pandemic. The pandemic's a big variable for everybody. There's a lot of confounding variables with the pandemic. That study was done before the pandemic. I'm not familiar with it, but quite frankly, the pandemic affects everybody, including children. In the study, it said children experience discomfort, discomfort when talking while wearing a mask and teachers and students could not read each other's facial expressions because of the mask. I mean, that's pretty self-evident. Isn't it true, Doctor? Objection, Your Honor. It's going to be a question of the study. It's going to be an opportunity to review the study. It's just hand-picking random quotes. We don't even know what he's referencing. We don't know the title of the article. We don't know the journal that it was published in. The doctor, if it's going to be a question, Your Honor, needs to be given an opportunity to authenticate that document and read it in its entirety to be able to properly answer questions. And again, it's outside the scope of your questions. Do you want to cite the article, or you can just ask the same question without referencing the article? Well, that was my intent, Your Honor. And by the way, Doctor, you cited an article that you read yesterday from China. You haven't told us the name of the article. I didn't let him get to it because I didn't want to know what he learned last night. But that's what – I'll just take that statement, just in general, hypothetically. I mean, children in school need to see their teachers' faces to interact with them properly in the classroom. Would you agree with that? Ideally, yes, but we're in a pandemic. Ideally, but we're in a pandemic that kids don't get sick, kids don't go to the hospital, kids don't die. That's the pandemic we're in. And kids are being deprived of that facial expression in school for a disease that has practically no effect on them. Isn't that true, Doctor? Objection, Your Honor. It's the same objection that's outside the purpose of your question with respect to this. A study that the doctor hasn't seen, a hypothetical question, calls for speculation, hearsay, and speculation. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the scope of the question. Objection, Your Honor. It's outside the sc
I, I, I think kids would like to do that, but it's about risk and benefit. About well, risk and benefit, yes. So I finally got you to concede, Doctor, that there is a risk that children have a risk of suffering some emotional harm by having to wear masks. Your testimony is that risk is outweighed by the benefit. Is that, is that your testimony? I have not conceded the point there's risk of kids wearing masks. If there's any risk, it's minimal. I think the benefit of not transmitting cases in school is really important. I think the benefit of kids not bringing cases home to their loved ones, their family members, their social contacts is very important. These are things that I think are very self-evident. So you think it's minimal. I, I have 38 parents here. Their concerns don't matter. I didn't say their concerns don't matter. Well, outside of the school here. Well, We're just going to keep continuing. Okay. All right, well, I'll just end with this, Doctor. So you are the arbiter of the risk-benefit analysis, not the regulatory process, not what the statute says. People can come in, present evidence, argue the risk and benefit, the and then the regulatory agency has to make a decision and give a reason why they weigh the risk benefit in a certain way. You've circumvented that whole process, and now you're the one that decides what risk benefit is, is appropriate. Objection, Your Honor. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor. That is argumentative. That is not what the doctors testified to. It's a regulatory process. There are other people involved with this. It's, again, outside the limited scope of the questions that were asked. <coughs> Yeah, so I'm not the only person who's involved with this. I have a medical staff, I have a leadership team, I have a whole department of health around me. We balance everything as best we can. Throughout the entire pandemic, over these 19 months, I have been part of very unpopular decisions, and I've gotten used to being part of unpopular decisions. Doctor, that's not responsive to my question. It is. It is. You asked him if he's the one who put his own opinion in there. Are you the one who signs the executive order, Doctor? No, Judge, I'm not. Do you recommend it? You're the other person that recommended it. No, yeah, but he's not the one. He clearly labeled that. I can answer that for him. Excuse me if you jump again, but you, your question was, are you the one who takes over from everybody else and makes the decision? And he's not. He doesn't sign the regulation. I, I think the director does that, but we'll see. And he doesn't sign the executive order. He is not the governor. Is there a doctor? Your point is well taken. And with that, this release case continues. You can include your own. Thank you. But, uh, thank you for us. Actually, that was a defense uh, witness. Uh, uh, any, any more of the defense case? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. So both parties rest and there is no rebuttal, correct? Yeah, actually, technically, Your Honor, there's no rebuttal. Okay. I'm not right, sure. So the evidence is now concluded. There's nothing else to be submitted. And therefore, the only thing we need to do is to come up with a. Uh, and you can on top of that. We need to come up with a briefing schedule. My understanding is a brief instead of uh, arguing. Is that correct? That's correct. Judge, I would like to do briefing and argument if that's possible. <laughs> and what order? Well, brief, the regular order briefing first. Have, have the court have the opportunity to review the briefs and have the court schedules for argument when the board's ready for us. Or the court can set a date now, whatever the court chooses. Okay. Uh, let me talk to both ca all counsel and then I will uh, set it. I'll talk to counsel. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, try to the recess. Thank you. 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 Th